and wives and nine to fives, but we are married to the games. <laughs> I usually start out with yes, yes, y'all, and I thought I would switch it up this week. Gabe Patillo here with Tim Router and Timothy Hall. Hope everybody is doing good, enjoying the holidays. Happy Hanukkah to some, and uh, we keeping it moving. We're loving it. Uh, it's been awesome, awesome time of year. I freaking love this time of year, and it's freaking great. I can't even get over myself. And so I'm just so happy that it's finally winter and it's finally Christmas time. And uh, shoot, Tim Router, are you loving it? Oh, 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 <laughs> absolutely, man. I'm, I'm all over it, man. It's been, uh, I, I love it because Lauren's is like going crazy at the store right now. And uh, this past weekend was Dickens of a Christmas, which uh, in downtown Franklin, which if, if you don't know, um, they basically closed down all of Main Street and it's set to like the, the Charles Dickens Christmas Carol era. So there's a lot of like hoop skirts and, you know, you have the old boppies and all that kind of stuff. And it's a lot of fun. They have, you know, they have some vendors that come in and, um, they close down the streets and people just walk in. It's really great for the retailers, uh, in downtown Franklin. So Lauren was, we were, Lauren put me to work basically. So this past weekend, it was Saturday and Sunday, so we really didn't have a weekend. We were working the the entire weekend, but it was it was for Dickens, and it was holiday, and it was festive, and, it, and we had a good time, and it was it was good stuff. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much that's pretty much what my week slash weekend has been. I've been working. I've been trying to get a bunch of projects done before the holidays, so I haven't touched my PS3 at all. I haven't played a single thing except for whatever's on my phone. So I've been playing some Clay Jam, which I uh, which I talked about last week, and I'm almost I've almost finished it, which is great. And I've played like some Zynga Poker and Words with Friends. That's pretty much the games I've done. Hey man, that, Clay Clay Jam ain't bad, right? It's fun. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Man, I downloaded Clay Jam on a friend of mine's phone just to play it because it's a, annoying to play iPhone games on the iPad sometimes, yeah. especially the vertical ones. Yeah, I don't know. I wasn't feeling it. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if it was just too ugly or what for me, but I I, I was like, uh, was it full screen or, did right. it, or was it like half screen on the iPad? No, I played it on somebody's iPhone. I put it on a buddy's phone. I was like, Clay Jam, all my boys are saying it's the bomb. You should play it. And nice. he was like, nah, I think he uninstalled it. It's OK. Oh, well, hey, <laughs> hey, not everybody can be cool. Whatever. It's all exactly. Good. You win some, lose. Yeah, I would think that game would be cooler on the iPad. Yeah. They don't have an iPad version. Oh, oh is it okay. just iPhone? Never mind. Interesting, interesting. So that's what that happened. You can still play that. it on there, though. Like, it, doesn't it get stretched out or something? Yeah, that's what I'm saying, though. Vertical games aren't as fun to play because of my uh, case. Oh. I'm, I'm usually in landscape most of the time. Oh, so uh, okay. I see. You have to, like, tilt it up and put it like a tent, and it's just, it's not as fun. Wah, wah, wah. I well, know. I'm sorry. Tim, well, no, Timothy it, Hall. Yes, sir. <laughs> Sorry, Router, were you going to say something? No, I was just going to say um, I haven't played any games because I'm kind of just waiting for the holidays and um, you know, getting all those deals, and I'm sure I'll get a few gift cards for, for Christmas too. So it's probably going to be one of those things where after Christmas Day, I'm going to be like in, in game heaven. So I, I'm just kind of holding out for a little bit, trying to get as much work done before the holidays as possible, and then like that whole week just – veg out if i can and if if i don't have to go anywhere i won't and i'll just play games and it'll be great <laughs> man i'm telling you as far as freaking deals go amazon it's tuesday night right now when we're when we're talking amazon had some crazy stuff going tonight i felt like all day today they had assassin's creed 3 for 33 dollars. they had dishonored yeah, on there for that. 30 bucks i was like oh shoot i, I tried to retweet as much as i could the stuff that I saw come through, but I was pretty impressed with what they had going. Yeah, that's why I pretty much buy everything from Amazon. So They're the best. We love you, Amazon. Yeah, exactly. Timothy Hall, how was your... Bringing jobs to Nashville. <laughs> right, right. Um, Timothy Hall, how was your weekend, bud? According to Raptor.com, I played Magic the Gathering for four hours in the last week. Nice. Awesome. That's uh, that's probably my most played, I guess. Have you guys ever used Raptor.com? I don't even know what that is. It's like R-A-P-T-R. For Xbox, it tracks your game time. Oh, I don't need that. For PlayStation 3. Well, for PlayStation 3, it tracks your trophies and stuff, so it kind of 
like tells you how you're doing against other people. Oh, that's cool. It, it kind of tells you how you're doing on the whole, so it gives you like a rank, like a newbie, amateur, experienced, dedicated, hardcore, and elite. See, I, I need I need my wife to know how long I've told her I've been playing video games. I don't need a number <laughs> to actually tell her the actual amount yeah. of hours I've put into some video games. Yeah, you probably don't want that. <laughs> I'm totally with you, Gabe. I do not want my wife knowing exactly how many hours I've no, logged in. No, sir. No. Because that's just fuel to the fire, man. Fuel to the fire. <laughs> that's exactly yeah, it's right. A pretty su- <laughs> yeah. It's a pretty sweet service, though. Um, I signed up for it like a really long time ago, and it keeps track of my stuff. So if I ever want to like see how I'm doing, I just go to my profile page and look. But yeah, I mean... Every time I sat down to play games over the weekend, I played Magic the Gathering, so, and I'm not trying to sound like a huge nerd, but man, I mean, there's something about the the Xbox slash PS3 game. I like it a lot, and card game, I wouldn't touch that with a 10-foot pole, but, you know. <laughs> uh, it's funny, I saw one of my old buddies playing it in the mall one time in the food court, like, against another guy. And I almost went up and said hello, <laughs> but then I saw that he was playing it in the food court exactly. with another guy. The actual magic. I was like, "I'll, I'll, I'll come, I'll come back and say, I'll say hi to him online." <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> all, all I know is that I believe the people who make the actual card game, I think they used to make Pokemon cards too. They probably still do. You remember those? Of course. Oh yeah. Yeah, kids would just like buy those and collect them i don't know anybody that actually played the game i don't think i know anybody either but then again all my friends are older now well like at the time Pokemon too, feels like, a little young well at the t- no I, I mean it would it ventured into high school i mean it was people were playing it at all levels at least where i lived so hmm. i don't know probably the there same people that. playing magic the gathering so <laughs> exactly nerd That's alert for sure Oh, shoot. Other than that, man, man, shoot. Preparation for new job. Um, How is that? Yeah, man, the new job is great. Um, You're not a vampire anymore. Yeah, I know. I right. adapted to the sleep schedule, like, immediately. So, oh, good, know, man. That's right. Because, you that's know, it's awesome. a normal schedule. There's something about, like, that's the thing. With my third shift job, there were windows, so you could see that it was dark outside. Right. And I think your mind just... just psychologically like you look outside you see it's dark and you're you're it just makes you tired of course it's like something you don't even think about yeah it's like uh when daylight savings happens and it starts getting dark at 4 45 you're like <laughs> man <laughs> is dinner ready yeah that's a that's a nashville thing man because yeah i was eastern time and we i think it got dark around 5 45 so yeah a little later but 4.45, that's terrible. Man, doesn't it feel awful? I know. It's, it's dark out before I even leave work. <laughs> right. Like, uh, exactly. This is terrible. You drive home, it feels like midnight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jeez Louise. All right, Gabe, where were you this weekend? I was in the great Northeast. We, did, uh, we were in Virginia and then two shows in Pittsburgh and a show in <laughs> dang it well i don't remember we did, did you hit four philly shows at all? <laughs> we did four shows i know that did you hit philly at all yeah man we hit philly and we hit um shoot where else were we oh hershey oh sweet where'd you play in philly that's my old, that's my old home, hometown man we played at temple university where bill cosby oh, went nice yeah my best friend bill cosby <laughs> uh, yes the yeah one. i was gonna say did he join you guys on stage or something y- yeah he came up and did the fat albert dance it was awesome <laughs> <laughs> um, you know i almost thought you were serious <laughs> i wasn't i, I didn't is, think so this has got to be bill cosby's like favorite time of year because all the rest of the year he's considered as the old guy who wears ugly sweaters and now he just like fits in for like a month and a half <laughs> 
Because they all because eat their jello, jello pudding pops. <laughs> they eat their jello pudding pops long. Uh, yeah, so That's we were, so oh, I'm sorry. We were in Toledo, Ohio first, then Virginia, then two shows in Pitts in uh Philly and Hershey. So Toby came by the store uh I think last night or so and he was telling me that like man, people it's like selling out and like he the the ticket sales I think in where was it? In his hometown yeah, Virginia. in Fairfax, right? Uh-huh. Like the at the same venue that you guys played, Wiz Khalifa was supposed to play there and only sold like 800 tickets and they had to cancel yeah. the show. It was what the was night that? before. It was the night before Wiz Khalifa was going to play. And, That's amazing. Uh, they had to cancel the show because nobody was coming out. Well played, so, Toby Mac. That's hilarious. Sorry, Wiz. You should have been playing with Toby Mac, dog. Black and yellow, black and yellow, <laughs> black and yellow. <laughs> I know. Sheesh. That's, the, that's that part of town. Maybe it was, you know. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. know what's going on with that. I guess that was too much of Redskin territory. Yeah, it's true. You know, it's not, it's not Steelers yet. That's awesome. Um, so anyway, that was it for me. Played a bunch of Assassin's Creed because I'm still loving that game. So you're loving Brotherhood, Brotherhood still, right? Yeah, I'm liking it a lot. Okay. So it's, that's, that's holding me on until I, I think the thing I'll go to next is Hitman. It's got to be. Yeah. Because I'm just, I'm jumping for oppor- it. Oh, man. Yeah. I had the opportunity to almost get um, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood because it was on sale on uh, the Xbox Marketplace for like 10 bucks, I think. Oh, wow. Yeah, you should oh, get I it. almost did it. Yeah, I almost did it, but... Uh, it's worth 10 bucks, man. I got man. so much to play. Exactly. Yeah. I understand that. And even then, I'd, get, I'd rather get it on PlayStation so I could play, like, if we ever got the chance to play multiplayer. Right. Yep. Well, hey, I've got Assassin's Creed 3 if anybody wants it. So next time, just holler and I'll get it to you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Even though you said you didn't love it. No, I mean, it was, it's good. I still, I mean, I think Brotherhood was just... It's just different because that's what I was just introduced to with the whole Assassin's Creed thing, and I loved it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Assassin's Creed 3, I mean, there's just tons to do, which is great. But there's, you know, there's some things I love about it, and then there's some things that just are frustrating. But <laughs> it was, I mean, hey, it's it's still good, man. I'll, I'll still probably play it again at some point if there's nothing else to play. But there's so much to play that I will probably keep it on the back burner for a while. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. Speaking of... You're our release guy. Was there any releases this week? Not. I got nothing. Like, I even looked on, on a couple of my resources, and they were like, I, I don't even think it loaded the page. It was just like, we got nothing. We're done. We're tapped out. <laughs> you, got, you got a 404 error? Yeah, right. That was hilarious. They were like, not found, not found. We got nothing. Yeah. So I'm sure there's something out there that, that I'm, I may or may not be missing, but eh, just look it up. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I, I saw a report that said November sales overall were like down 11% from last uh, year's November, which I thought was pretty crazy considering the huge games that came out. But right. I was like, huh, that's interesting. Wonder, down 11%. I wonder if that was because of Modern Warfare 3. Well, think was about that it, just know, last November? What's that? Did did Black Ops Two surpass Modern Warfare Three? I don't know. I thought it did. I thought it did, but yeah, maybe it tipped into say, December. Every time they release one, I think it 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 outdoes uh, the it other. Feeds the last one. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I think it I think it tripped into December, and so it started on December's numbers. Yeah, instead you might of be. November, yeah, you know? you're right. You're right. It was toward the end of November, and you know what? Uh, Skyrim came out too in November, didn't it? Or was that December? I, well, could, I didn't play that game. I played the crap out of that game. That was a good game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Speaking of oh. Skyrim, I went back to play uh, Oblivion. Oh, yeah. And, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I was going to say, like, I didn't get a chance to play Oblivion when it came out. I had the opportunity to get it a few times, but I just I kept holding off on it. And I played through Skyrim... And so I was like, uh, Oblivion, you know, it's the older game, but it's probably still pretty good. I mean, it came out a little bit before uh, Fallout did. Um, so I popped it in, and uh, it feels so old. Really? Oh, jeez. Like, in comparison, man, it feels like a completely different console generation. Wow. Dang it. It basically feels like a PS2 game. Really? But, yeah, it's weird. That, that sucks. They were still working it out. 
Yeah, I, I just it. I really wish I would have played that first and then went to Skyrim, but now that I've played Skyrim, I can't play this other game. I can't play Oblivion. Oh, yeah. Oh, and speaking of a a game kind of like that in the same vein that you told me about was uh, Baldur's Gate. Yeah. And it finally uh, released on the iOS. Really? Yeah, do they have a trial for that so you could check that out? Because I was going to say, when I get an iPad, I will check that out. I, I, you know, it's funny. They don't have a free version or a demo or anything like that, but I did watch a bunch of video and maybe because I didn't play it back in the day, so I don't have that love for it. So it just kind of looks like, eh, to me. It's yeah, an- it's, I think it's just, you know, one of those top down RPG types, kind of like a Diablo, I guess. But it's really fun. You've told me before. That's what I hear. I mean, um, oh, you never played Baldur's Gate. I thought you did play it. No, I played, I played a, a variant of the game. So there's a couple different ones. It was made by Bioware, I believe. Mm -hmm. And I played one of their games back in the day and I loved it, but it was on PC too. So I don't know what it'd be like on the iPad. I got you. I got you. Yeah. Because they made it, they made a ton of those games. They're all based on, uh, Dungeons and Dragons lore. Right. Uh, Whatever lore there is. (laughs) Whatever lore is left. It's lore. Yeah. Wherever it is, it's it's lore. lore. (laughs) <laughs> hey hey hall um, did you get a chance did you get a chance to play um any more walking dead at all uh, i didn't get a chance to no i i really i want to sit down and just play through the episodes because i don't want to have to like play through half of one and stop or anything right right um i just haven't had time i'll probably get time this coming weekend okay. so there just checking go. um hall you got something for us Actually, before I go, did you guys get a chance to play through the rest of the episodes of The Walking Dead? Or, oh yeah. Oh, okay. So you finished it, Tim? Oh yeah, I, I finished it the same day I downloaded episode five, and I I actually do the same thing. I I don't want to like stop in the middle of an episode. Like I'll I'll play through um, an entire episode, and I know it took you quite a bit because you go and talk to everybody. But usually, like for for me, most of the episodes took maybe an hour to an hour and fifteen minutes. So I was able to just get it. Like if I would finish an episode, that's when I would stop, and then for the next one, it's just keep going, man. It's so great, you'll love it. You know what? I'm on the road so much that I'm trying to decide whether I'm gonna play it on iOS on my iPad or get it on my PS3, because then I could just play it in my bunk and stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's the thing. It'd be awesome on the iPad. Like, yeah. I really wish I had one for that reason. I might that do might that. Be, and that answers your whole inverted question there, Hall. You could just get it. Yeah, I know. It'd be so much better. That still cracks me up. <laughs> hey, you got you got to do what you got to do, man. I came oh, from a time you. where I came from a time where they didn't give you the option. I'm like with some you. games just were like, nope, you're inverted. Yep. Right. You're doing airplane controls. Sorry. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Sorry, this is all we know. <laughs> it's, it's all yeah, good, well, man. Finally, finally, somebody figured out you could just use the second stick as a, as a, as a like, toggle cursor type thing, and then they were just like, huh, I guess we don't have to fly planes anymore. <laughs> right. Your flying days are over. Not me, though, man. When I'm playing Call of Duty, I'm bringing it in for landing, man. Me too, so, Jack. I'm right there with you, baby. That's awesome. all I'm saying. <laughs> all right, go ahead, Hall. Give us some. Uh, the, uh... <laughs> all right. I had something pulled up there. I'll start then. I I'll, I'll, I got one. Yes, yes, please. Does anybody have twenty five thousand dollars sitting around? Yeah. Why? Yes, I do. Oh, good. Can I borrow it? <laughs> Why do you ask? <laughs> yeah. Uh eighty percent interest. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> um, so a guy who goes by the username by you uh put together all seven hundred and twenty one SNES games ever released in the US, Mexico, and Canada. And he's selling them on eBay for twenty five thousand dollars, all with their original boxes, and eighty five percent of them have manuals. And I wow. thought that was crazy. Uh, that's the deal breaker. Only eighty-five wow. percent of them have manuals. I'm done. <laughs> you need all of them to have manuals. I'll give you five bucks. Yep. <laughs> I'll match crazy. his five. 
I'll give him six. Come on, let's get a bidding <laughs> yeah. war going. I'll give you 40 bucks. That's right. Um, do you guys think that's worth $25,000? It's going to go quickly, I'm sure. There's going to be somebody. Maybe. I mean, it's got boxes. Yeah. Yeah. There will be somebody yeah, out I mean, there who's going to be like, yep, done. And they may even bring them down in price. But that, you know, with that, with with all those in their boxes, oh, yeah, that's huge. I mean, that's pretty crazy. That's a crazy, it, t- it took him three years to put the whole collection together. But that's pretty crazy. Like, I'm, I'm interested to see what he paid to get them all together. Yeah. You know what I, I mean? Because some of those games you can get yeah. for so cheap. But if you want it with the box and with the manual, that's hard to find. Why didn't he just go all the way and and get the manuals for everything maybe probably some of them you can't find i mean some of them games you know were probably got barely any of them made just because they suck so bad <laughs> uh there's there's ways and that was back in the day where everything sold thousands and thousands of copies so there's got to be stuff around yeah i know the- but there might be some games that was released in mexico and canada that we ain't never even heard uh, of that are probably hard true. to get a hold of yeah, you know with I mean? those games, uh, with those games, you open up the manual and it just says this game sucks. Close game. <laughs> <laughs> it says don't bother. Here's a copy of your yeah, receipt. Go ahead exactly. and take it back because you threw it out. <laughs> exactly. Don't bother. Or That's uh, awesome. We, we ran out play. of paper. <laughs> I know there's some I know of the bags come of in a brown like that, paper though. sack. <laughs> awesome. Handwritten uh, manuals. Geez. Exactly. It's like uh, if you push up. You'll go up. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, handwritten manual. No, I think I think it's gonna go. There's gonna there's definitely some a lot of nostalgia for a lot of people, and somebody who's wealthy enough would probably just buy it all up. I mean, think about it. Three if he took if it took three years and he's offering twenty five, like that's not that's like a starting salary for one year. That's three years, you know? So he's Seriously. not even making he's not even making like any type of minimum wage really for all of his work. So you know what? Give him the twenty five K because he earned it on that one. So I'm with I'll you. Say. That's crazy. That's crazy. I just keep it though at that point. Yeah, well, probably. He wants to he wants to go ahead and, and do the he wants to put together the Europe and the Japanese um collections. And oh, so wow. that's why he's selling it so he can start back up doing the european and the japanese collections and those will probably sell like hotcakes right yeah that's the thing if he was smart he would just move to japan and go around all the little stores and buy up the you know the sealed copies of metroid or something then sell them on ebay right yeah of course yeah because you can get that stuff cheaper over in japan i mean they they don't care as much about american copies of games or you know, stuff like that, at least as much as we do, you know. Yeah, we think higher of ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> either, that or we're in, either that or we're impatient. We're like, we played it, we're, let's sell it. Play it, sell it. Play yeah. it, sell it. We, we spend our disposable income on frivolous things. So. Yes. <laughs> All right, Hall, you ready? Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, I thought you were, like, going to say, are you ready? Because you were going <laughs> to ask me a question. <laughs> You're up, you're up there, Kimosabi. Hit it. Yeah, yeah. Hey, man, I'm all, I'm all screwed up, man. I got the new shift blues. Yeah, you're on shift so lag. I'm unshiftable. <laughs> Jeez, um, Louise. No, uh, I was gonna say about that last story you told us. Um, shoot, man, could you imagine what that collection would be worth if those were like sealed? Oh my god, sealed oh. copies of everything. Oh, it'd be insane. I mean, yeah. he wouldn't. Uh, that'd be insane. They need to be in a museum somewhere. <laughs> That's got to be almost yep. impossible, right? That's almost impossible. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, you would have had to buy them when they came out and just kept them and never played them. Bought two of everything, like right. people do comics. That's like the new Back to the Future, man. It's like instead of uh, getting the sports almanac, Biff just goes back and buys games. <laughs> right exactly what's that Buys one the second a bunch one of games is that the second one That's uh the second, the second one, right? one actually he takes the sports almanac yeah and he, he goes back in time i guess and gives it to himself or something exactly i can't remember rich. yeah so he goes back in time and he says okay when this nes comes out just buy everything and don't <laughs> touch it don't play it <laughs> um, that, that, um that was the worst of those three i think 
Except for the yeah, hoverboard. The I hoverboard agree. was the only saving grace of Back to the Future 2. Yeah, I wasn't the biggest fan of Back to the Future 2. I think 1 was obviously amazing. Um, yeah, that was the best and 3 one. was good. And three, 3 was pretty good. I mean, they yeah, brought in that good. one girl from uh, Step Brothers. Yeah. Uh, Oh yeah, <laughs> well, way before she was in Step Brothers, but yeah, yeah, way before she was in Step Brothers. I mean, really, they brought maybe, Step Brothers. Maybe they, maybe they, they the knew girl. she was going to be in Step Brothers. You know, it is Back to the Future. <laughs> They're like, she's going to be in a hilarious. <laughs> 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 That's awesome. She is going to be in this hilarious <laughs> movie, and she is still going to look as good. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, exactly. It is Back to the Future. That's Did you touch my drum hilarious. That's so good. Oh my <laughs> gosh, that's funny. Okay, Hall. Um, yeah, I was Hit just it. using that to buy me some time. Yeah, I figured um, that you were. I was looking up, uh, there's a company bringing uh, Japanese games to the PS1 Classics store. Uh-oh. So there was a company already doing this called... Uh, Sony? Monkey I'm Paw. Uh-huh. Monkey Paw. Um, I guess Gung Ho Online Entertainment, I guess, is now doing it. Or they okay. have been doing it. All right. Um, yeah, so Japanese games. You think right. that'll fly? <laughs> That's all you get. Um, uh, to be honest with you, I think I think that they wouldn't do it if they weren't making enough to justify it. Because I mean, really, the game is made. They run it right. through an emulator. I was about so to say it probably that, doesn't cost that much to bring it anyway. Well, the only thing that costs money, and this story I guess talks a little bit about it, is tracking down licenses. Because you've got to oh, secure okay. the license not only for the game, I guess you got to also look into the music too. Really? You got to re license yeah, I mean, it, huh? Yeah, I mean, there's really a lot of red tape involved in getting emulated, emulated games huh. in sellable form. Huh. And that's, that's for like every everything. That's for American games, imports, everything. So it's, it's interesting. interesting. Because a lot of times I'll be looking like through classics or I'll be looking through like virtual console and I'll be like, you know, why don't they have this or why don't they have this? But maybe it's because not enough people are going to want it for them to put in the effort to go through getting all those agreements put to put in place. Sure. What's one that you've been hunting for? Is there one that you've particularly had your eye open and been wanting to see? Yeah, there were a couple... And I'm trying to remember. They're like they were in Nintendo 64 games, actually, because a lot of them aren't on Virtual Console. There's most of them are just the the Nintendo games. Um, mm. I mean, I know there were some. I just can't think of them off the top of my head. I got you. I got you. Yeah. I think Blast Blast Core might have been one of them, but I don't remember. Blast Core. I don't remember that. That might be on there actually. Nice. I hope it is for you. Um, so we had a bunch of, uh, video game awards going on this last little bit. Timothy Router, you got some, you got some know-how on that? I've got some, I've got some, I've got the, the Spike ones. Did you have the Machinima yeah. ones? Yeah, uh, Machinima had their Inside Gaming Awards on Sunday night, I believe. And, um, I, I this is a great time of year because then this is when all the, everybody, is scrambling to, to find out who's got game of the year and all this other stuff. So I'll run down uh, quite a few of them for you. So we've got for game of the year, uh, it was Halo 4. Uh, ah. co- best co op multiplayer was Mass Effect 3. Best competitive multiplayer was Halo 4. Best sound design wow. was ha- best sound design was Halo 4. Here we go. Wrenching the whole thing. Best art direction, Journey. Yep. Journey's killing it right now, and we'll, we can talk a little bit more about that on the, the VGAs too, but um, Best Environmental Design was Dishonored. Oh, okay. Best Original... I agree s- with that one. Yeah, because you played it, and you said it was beautiful, right? Yeah, it's a great-looking game. The characters look weird, but the environments look great, so... That's cool. Uh, best Original Score went to Fez, which I thought was really cool. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, best original game went to Hotline Miami. Uh, cinematography went to Mass Effect 3. Best, narr- best narrative went to Spec Ops, The Line. And, uh, of course, best downloadable game, The Walking Dead. Yay. Right. Uh, 
And then was there ba- any competition for that? Come I on. don't. I really don't think so. Um, best indie game again was Fez, which was really cool. I I really want to check that game out because wasn't that Gabe? Didn't you say you watched that indie movie? And that was one of the yeah. games. Indie that was, games, the movie. Yeah, indie yeah. games, the movie. I want to watch that because I'm really, I'm really curious about it. And it, I mean, and I saw it because is isn't Fez the one where you go from 2D into 3D, and it's just, it just seemed so stinking cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I, I saw a little bit of that. Did they bring that to Mac and PC? I don't know. I hope so. We'll have to check. I think they, I think they brought it to at least PC, and I think somebody was going to port it to Mac or something. On Steam? Hmm. Yeah, something like that. Because we'll I know it was Steam. only on 360. I think it was published by Microsoft. Yeah. So, um, with uh, Machinima, it seems like Halo was kind of the big winner over there, huh? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, they The one... Uh, let's see what else we had. Yeah, Gamer's Choice went to Assassin's Creed 3. That was the only uh, AS, AC3 uh, win of that whole award show. Um the best trailer went to The Last of Us for their GamesCon 2012 trailer, which was interesting. Well, heck yeah. And the best character design went to Lee Everett of The Walking Dead. So that's very cool. Wow. Yeah, Walking Dead yeah. Did, got one, two, three, I think three. Wow. Yeah, wow, I was going to wow. say, Lee is Lee is a cool character. Like, I, was, I wasn't too sure when I first started playing it. I was kind of worried he might be a bit shallow, but he's, oh, he's, he's actually, great. he's a really cool character. Yep. And he's acted so well. Yeah, His voice yeah. acting has done so well. It brings so much Definitely. to it. Definitely. Um, well, it was it was a it was a pretty similar story. That's the only problem when it comes to award shows. You know, like we'll have the Grammys and the American Music Awards, and they have like where well, they have like the CMAs and the CMTs. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Like, you know, so a lot of the times, a lot of the things are are the same. But with uh, Spike's video game awards, the VGAs, that was on December seventh. Uh, they had The Walking Dead was Game of the Year. Yes. Best downloadable game, best adapted video game, and best performance by a human female for Clementine. Ooh, I yeah, love she her. is. Re- She's she great. Is really good in that game. Yep, Melissa, Melissa Hutchinson. Yep, Melissa Hutchinson is Clementine. I mean that she I. Really, like you gravitate to her when you're when you're playing that game. It's just so cool. Like like when yep. I was at, at playing Lee, like you get very protective of her, and it's just the way that that she projected her voice and just everything it was just awesome. She was really good. And, yep. And Halo Four only took home two uh, two awards from those guys, and it was best Xbox 360 game, which is kind of a weird category. Duh. But, uh, yeah, it was like exactly. the only Xbox 360 game. <laughs> it was like that and Gears of War is what they was up against. Right. And then uh But Gears Halo... came out last year, man. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, so Halo um, 4 was like the Xbox game this year. Yeah. That's what the that's what the category maybe should have been. Yes. The Xbox game of the year is <laughs> the, Xbox the best game. Halo 4 game. The this best year. Halo 4 game of the year goes to Halo 4. And, and, it, and it got best graphics. Yeah. Which is uh Yeah, it looks know. good. It does That's what I've heard. Really here. It looks good. great. It it gets a little if the uh, frame rate gets a little wacky at times, but it looks good. Um, and then we had we had Journey with, uh, of course, uh, best PlayStation Three game. Period. I know that Journey. That's that wow. was like whoa because that beat out Borderlands Two, AC Three, Dishonored. I mean, that's that's a big win right there. That's huge and. It got obviously got best independent game because it it was an independent, and it got best original score, yep. which, by the way, is the very 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 first video game ever to receive a Grammy nomination for the same category. That's best, so cool. Uh, score. I was like, shoot, best score, Journey. I was like, go ahead. Video games. Nerds one. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. <laughs> Jocks zero. Give it up for video game nerdage. That's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. and then and then, uh, and then Roger Ebert got up there and said, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then he of pulled course, a Darth Vader. <laughs> no. <laughs> right. No. Or, or, or a Van Helsing. Van Helsing yeah. has a terrible no in his in that yep. movie. Really? No. Oh yeah. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, that, that's a really weird. That's weird wasn't that movie. Hugh Jackman? Yes. Yeah, it was Hugh Jackman. 
side reference a here. Terrible he was movie. in a play. He was in a play, and he had to kiss a man or something. Like Hugh Jackman was. Apparently, one of the like one of the shows or something like somebody stands up from the audience and he's like, Wolverine, no. <laughs> Dude, I gotta that's look pretty up incredible. this story. I've heard this story from multiple people. Oh, so we gotta find it on YouTube. It incredible. We have to find that on YouTube. It's gotta be somewhere. Oh, it can't be on YouTube because it was so spontaneous. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, that that's is so cool. Really, really funny. Um, the other thing was Studio of the Year went to Telltale Games. So, I mean, obviously, Walking Dead was huge when it came to uh, uh, Spike's Video Game Awards. And then I mentioned this game a couple of weeks ago. You don't know Jack. You know, it's kind of had a resurgence on Facebook and uh, PSN, and I'm guessing it's on Xbox uh, Arcade. It's on and, everything. Uh, I love that game. It got best social game. And no I was kidding. really happy about that. It made me feel all warm and fuzzy on the inside. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah we'll so have to get like, together and play that brick and mortar style. We yeah. definitely will. I actually hung out with my boy Ed Placencia this last week. Uh, he lives up uh, by Hershey, and he was the one that introduced me to that game. So I was like, "Oh man, that game just won Social Game of the Year!" So so cool. Uh, best social game. You don't know Jack? Yeah, man. That's I a that's it. actually a really old game. Like uh, it's old, I used to play old. On, yeah, I used to play it on PC in the, like the mid nineties. So yeah, and it was awesome then. Yeah, it's been around for a long time. Long, did long you guys, time. did any of you course, watch the VGAs at all? I, I didn't get to watch them. I have it DVR. Sadly, and I, sadly, I did not watch them since uh, What's-His-Name hosted it. Uh, who hosted yeah, I it? I can't remember. Was it Jack Black? Uh, I have no idea. Yeah, I don't even know. I, I have it. Know. I have it DVR'd and I haven't even watched it yet. But now that I know who won, I'll probably just go boop, 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 and like skip through everything. <laughs> right, right. And Amen. then, um, and then, uh, your boy, uh, um, Timothy Hall's Borderland Two, you know, swiped up a bunch too. Best shooter, best multiplayer game, uh, and best performance by a human male. Uh, Damian Clark is Handsome Jack, Borderlands Two. Uh, I thought that was good. I gotta play that game. Handsome Jack really wasn't really wasn't that great of a character in my opinion, but whatever. Why do you think he got best voice? He got best voice or best performance? I mean, best performance, but I mean, you know, same thing. Why, why do you I, think they got best voice acting, that, best performance by a human male? The the character, like as far as like his voice is concerned, is is kind of hysterical because most of the game he's just taunting you that's all he's doing like he's not ever in character except for like maybe a few cut scenes but like just the whole game he keeps saying things to you like uh oh yeah i just bought a pony or something like that you know what <laughs> i mean just something stupid random um yeah so i mean for that yeah there's a there's there's some relief there because like something big will go down like something emotional will go down and he's taunting you five minutes later so Huh. It's pretty funny, but I don't think it deserves best human male. If anything, Lee was a much better character. Yeah, I, I agree. got you. I agree. Lee, but, I thought uh, Lee's voice was awesome. Yeah, I think Telltale really knocked it out of the park this year. I do get a little worried about them winning all these awards, though, because that's going to kind of raise the stakes for them next time they do this. Yes. Of course. And they, they said that they're they're preparing. They're getting ready for a season two. I'm sure they are. I'm sure they're making sure it won't suck. Yeah, <laughs> that would be it nice. Not. That would be nice. Um, so the poor Wii U barely got any love on in the video game awards, <laughs> but um, <laughs> the poor Wii U, Reggie with a tear <laughs> streaming down his face. That's I right. know he was like, at least we got Bex the Wii U game for Super Mario Brothers U. You're like, yeah. uh, y'all were the only one in the category. Anyway. Yep. Um, <laughs> but I saw something that made me a little sad Best when it Wii came U to the game, Wii U. Halo 4. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been a shame. That would have been That's, a crying shame. That's good. Um, but I saw something. Uh, there's a game called The Incident. That's an iOS game. And it has a TV mode which I thought was really interesting. So you can play the game with your iPhone, probably through Apple TV. Yeah. And it streams on your phone, on on the screen. And then I was like, man, if people start dialing this in 
and they're able to stream stuff on the screen and then have something going on in your hands as well, then that feels a lot like the Wii U. You know what I mean? Right. So I was like, I don't know if that's going to get them not in trouble in the sense of like, you can't do that. But I wonder if that's going to get the Wii U in trouble if people are going to be able to do that with their freaking iPhones. Yeah, Hmm. it, it could go either way. But I mean, it's just different because with your iPad, it's everything's just nice and touch. You don't have these buttons to the right and to the left of you. That's true. Yeah, I've always, you know, I know that it look it seems that Apple doesn't want to necessarily try to get into the console space, but I've always kind of wondered what it would be like because they have so much money if they just bought a console manufacturer. I think that'd you know be I mean? amazing. I think that'd be great. Yeah, I mean, it would it would be incredible for innovation of the product. Like, say Apple bought Nintendo, for instance. Oh, Lord. Imagine what the Wii U would be like if you still had the gamepad and stuff, but you could you could also, you know, interact with your phones as well. Like, you could have your f- phones be separate screens and part of the experience. Or have and it just plus, play a bunch I mean, of apps. Apple, yeah, and, and, and yeah, tons of apps, tons of functionality. And you know that if Apple were to buy Nintendo, all the third parties would just be sucking in. Like, they would be right there. Oh, yeah. Right. There would be no yeah, because, problem. No problem with third-party development. And they'd probably keep it open source anyway, which would make it even, even bigger. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, Apple, if Apple were to come into that space, people would gravitate towards it because they know that your product would be in an Apple store. Mm-hmm. Like imagine that Wii U would be in an Apple store. So people aren't. People would buy their MacBook Pro and then get a Wii U on the way to checkout. You know, it's yeah, like yep. just cause. Yep. Yeah, because it's an Apple product and it plays my Apple con. Like imagine that playing Apple content through it. Like just everything synonymous with the cloud and everything. I mean, it just it's it's really it's really amazing that they haven't jumped at that opportunity yet. Yeah, well, I I'm, think they kind of have, you know, with the iPad and the iPad Mini. I mean, I don't know if they need a console. Well, that's the thing is the iPad, the, to me anyway, I mean, I know that basically I hear stories that Steve Jobs, like Steve Jobs never wanted the iPhone to be like well known as a gaming device. Like gaming was supposed to be kind of something that it did, but not necessarily be on the forefront. Yeah, that was right. always it was always it, a value really, added piece. Right. And it, it it is because of the third parties, not anything to do with Apple. Yeah, they, so they just have the, the iPad platform. is a successful gaming device because of third parties. You see what I'm getting at? Oh, I love oh, what yeah. you're get I love what you're getting at. I just hope they do it. Yeah, I mean it would be awesome. Or if maybe they got it kind of the itch to do something like that little Ouya box or whatever you call it. Yeah. The Android oh, yeah. box. The Android one, yeah. Where it's supposed to be $99. I mean, you know, I think that thing will see the light of day and I think it'll get Apple interested because... It could. Really, Apple could do something like that, you know, and charge 149 for it and say, hey, guess what? All those, all those iOS games you know and love, guess what? You can play them on your TV with a controller now. Oh my gosh, that'd be awesome. Parents would be all over that because the games are like a buck. Oh, that'd be incredible. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I think though the, the main thing about it though, the, the reason that apps work and app games work so much is because you, you can do it wherever. I think that's why Apple wouldn't do that because their whole the whole thing is like, Oh, I just pick up and play Temple Run for 15 minutes while I'm on the bus. Or, oh, I just play a Jetpack Joyride for just a second while I'm waiting for a cab or something. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I think like putting it at home to where you had to actually sit down and boot something up takes all the fun out of these small little games. And the reason they're 99 cents is because they're simple and easy to make, you know, as long as you've got a great idea. And uh, so I think that's the only reason that I keep them from doing something like that. Well, I agree with you somewhat, but. You got to understand that kids are glued to that stuff. Yeah. Regardless. And kids yeah. walk around with iPod touches and they don't, they don't stop playing. Nope. Yeah. Yeah. So you have if to- they were, and, and you look at games like, um, what is it? Shadow Gun and what's that other one? Nova. Uh, there's a bunch of like first person shooter games that oh, are yeah. 
extremely extended experiences that if you could sit, if I could sit down and play them, I'd rather just do that. Yeah, yeah. You know who's talking about doing what you're talking about? What's that? Valve. Yeah. You know, Valve is talking about making a gaming PC for the living room, you know, pretty much. I wish they would, because it would kind of create a standard, finally. Well, they kind of are the standard, though, too, aren't they? Like, they're Valve is huge. That's a big name right there. Yeah, I mean they're the stan- they're the standard in like your digital download client, but as far as like the living room, the reason that consoles are so successful is because it's one box and every single box has the same spec. Right. Developers, that- it's really easy for developers to develop for one spec, whereas with PC, it's like you got everybody, everybody with different drivers, different video cards, different everything. I think that'll be the problem that Valve will have because PC is known for if you max out your machine, then you've got better graphics than the PS3 and the Xbox. Yeah. But how do you make something that stays ahead of the consoles but is something that you've bought at one time? Do you make it to where the, the video card is just real easy to swap in and out and you just continue to upgrade memory and video? But that just gets so expensive, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I don't know how they're going to do it, but Valve, you know, talked about it a little bit that they want to they want to do a gaming PC for the living room and and bring it all together and I was like, "Huh. That's an interesting thought. I think they have a lot a lot a lot of hurdles and a lot of problems that'll kind of surface as they get further into that." But I thought it was a good idea and it's kind of right along with what you're saying about um, you know, especially with Steam powering everything. You know, it's the same thing with the cloud and everything like that. Yeah, I would love it if they did that because a lot of developers nowadays develop for the console and then pour to the PC anyway. So it's like you're not getting that much better of an experience on the PC when developers do that. And developers do it for cost reasons. It's you know, it's just easier and cheaper to do it that way. Right. I mean, we're at the point now where you got to think back to the the SNES era, you know, the SNES and the Genesis. Mm-hmm. Um SNES games were like eighty to a hundred dollars um, for like RPGs and stuff because of the cost of memory at the time, and this is like this is nineties dollars. So you right. know, take into effect inflation, we're getting games at a bargain price if you take into that like take into that into effect. Um, the fact that developers are getting less money for games now, it's like. Have we reached that point where they say, this is how much we're going to spend on development no matter what, so these assets are not going to get any better, these, um, you know, the graphics are not going to get any more detailed. We found that point that we just were happy with. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think they'll continue. I think when, I think they would think that if you didn't have games like Call of Duty and, and Halo 4 and these games come out and make a bazillion dollars. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So they're like, hey, I'll spend a bunch of money on a game if I think I'll those. see a return. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. They'll continue to focus on those and continue to push the envelope. I just, and they, they were probably saying this years ago, but I just kind of feel like we've, we've reached that, almost that point where it's cost reality measure. We didn't have the App Store five years ago. Isn't that crazy? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, now we've, we've got, a system that kids who are growing up now are used to paying 99 cents to <laughs> 9.99 you know for a game right so is it like i mean is it going our games next generation are probably still going to be 60 bucks but you know how long is it going to take for them to go up if at all that's so true. that's a good question. That means development development costs are going to stay the same. You know, you're going to have your flagship <clears throat> title, your Halo Four, and your Call of Duty, and they're going to put money into that. But and you know, and with these next gen consoles coming out, we're going to really, really, really. It's going to be very telling as to if the developers are in it for the money or in it for the fans. Because when they start shutting down this whole used game thing, where you can't sell your games after you buy them. It's going to be extremely telling of uh, of what they're going to want to get out of it. 
And I think it's going to be really interesting because if I can buy a game for $60 knowing that I'll never be able to resell it and get any of my money out of it, then I might be a little less apt to buy it right away. I might always wait till it goes on sale because with the PS4 and the Xbox and the whole rumor of, hey, once you get it and put it in your system, you will not be able to play it in any other system is a little scary when it comes to that. Yeah. Well, and it's just going to make the consumer be very conscious of what exactly they want to play and what what genre they want to play. Like it's it's going to be it's not going to be one of those things where people are just going to buy up games anymore. They're going to be very selective about who they are. And that's where I think some of these developers who already have a fan following will probably come out on top because people have already bought into that experience like the Ubisofts and, you know, and that kind of stuff and they will I think they will you'll see them kind of catering to their their fans because they want them to buy the games first. Right. I yeah, was, that's interesting. I wonder what it will do well, for the return as well. You know what I'm saying? Like let's say I go to Best Buy and I buy a game and let's say I don't like it and I want to take it back. Are they going to let me return it or am I yeah. not going to be able to return it? You know what I'm saying? So there's going <laughs> to yeah. be a lot of things that there's going to be some growing pains coming up this next uh, you know, not well, for another you year. You can't but still. return it. You can't return it now. Yeah. Right, GameStop takes games back like 7 days later. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's you true. Can, well. But it has to be unopened, different. doesn't it? Or <laughs> It can be opened. No, it can, no, it can be opened. It's if you buy a used game. It, oh. Well, is it? Can you do it with new games too? Yeah, because my buddy <laughs> back in the day used to abuse the crap out of the system, and he I would bet. buy games, beat them in like five days, and take them back. Yeah, but I, I heard that you have to take them back and actually trade them for something. Maybe. Uh, yeah, I mean, but even so, then I've gotten to play like six games in the you know in the last you know month and a half and. Have only had to pay for one. You know what I mean? Well, to answer your question, no. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Done. Well, speaking like of console it. news, there's... No, I was saying to answer your question that, nah, they... If if it is tied to one console, yeah, they're not taking anything back. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, don't think I right mean, the, the, the reason I think that that used game... The, them getting rid of that, I, I kind of think that's that's you know hogwash or whatever, because the retailers will kind of push back on that. I think, yeah, because especially gonna, if they got to uh, get money the somehow. Consoles are trying to go digital only. Um, a lot of people still don't have the internet, so how are you going to uh, eradicate those keys? You know what I mean? Of course. If somebody puts it puts a game in a console that's not connected to the internet, how are you going to keep track that they did it? <laughs> that's true. I mean that, that it, uh, unless it's like some kind of hardware encryption type thing, but uh, I don't know, man. I don't see them trying that hard. Yeah, because really, I think if they go this route and they have no used games, I don't think they're going to see any more money than they did with used games, to be honest with you. Right. Because it's like you said, people are going to take less risks, so they're not going to buy... They're going to buy games that they're remotely interested in. They're, you know... They're only going to buy games that they really want to play. Yeah, which is going to hurt the indie game. We'll see the rise of de- of more demos, too, and I think... I, I would hope that the demos would be... If, the, if that's the case, I would hope that the demos would be a little bit longer, that you could play a couple levels more, so that, you know, you can really decide whether or not you want to play this or not. That's a good point. I wonder if that has to do with uh, Sony's purchase of Gaikai. You know, how they purchased that streaming service? Yeah, could very Mm. well be. I wonder wonder if maybe they would be using that to stream demos or something. Or multiplayer demos or and or things of that nature. Yeah, that's that. Well, yeah, yeah. any any demo, like you know, if they say like you know, kind of like the one hour trial thing that they have now. Yeah. Where instead of downloading the actual game, you just play a trial version of it, a streamed trial version. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Interesting. Well, um, speaking yeah, of, that would be a good idea. Speaking yeah. of consoles, there's some there's some more console rumors going around as to exactly when this all of this is happening. Um, apparently, uh, Microsoft's next Xbox is be, that's being developed. The project name is now called Cryptos, and yep. with uh, PlayStation Four, they they had referred to the project internally as Thebes, which is very weird. Previously called Orbis, 
So th the interesting part of this is that both have uh, AMD chips, and they're saying, it's not confirmed though, that these chips can go into production uh, fairly soon, and they can project possibly a spring 2013 or autumn 2013 console launch. Here's yeah. my th here's my whole autumn. thing, and I'm gonna I'm gonna put this out there, and, and I could be completely wrong. I could be completely right. I don't know. So The Last of Us, they released their trailer. Yes, we talk about this game every podcast. But Hallelujah. Yes, the, Hallelujah. Exactly. At the, uh, at the VGAs, they released the next trailer for The Last of Us and released the release date of May 7th, 2013. Hallelujah. I have, a, I have a feeling that we might see a bundle PS4 with The Last of Us around that time. There's no way that they can't, this is like the most, one of the most anticipated games, and it's an exclusive. Sony would be foolish to not, and and to add to that, Naughty Dog already has the PS4 dev kits anyway, so they've probably already been playing with it. I would not be a bit surprised if there's got to be some sort of a PS4 bundle around that time. Not with them taking so, pre-orders already, I don't think. Now that game's coming out for PS3 though, isn't it? For sure it is. Oh yeah. So maybe the PS4 may be backwards compatible, maybe? Who is that what you're saying? That would backwards be, compatibility? That would be awesome. Well, that would be awesome if they made the PlayStation 4 backwards compatible, because when I get it, I could just you know sell my PS3 or downgrade it to living room status or something. I don't know. I think they would. Don't you think they would? I mean, I mean they did it first with the PS3 and then turned it off. So something about right. yeah, the being reason, and the reason they took it out is because well the reason they took it out is because the hardware emulation was costing money, like basically the PS3 the PS3 like launch was five ninety nine because it had a PS2 in it. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean literally go. literally it had the hardware in it. So I think backwards compatibility may be... I was thinking it would be the thing that they would drop. And the reason that I was thinking that the May 7th release date makes sense is because it's a month before E3. Yeah. So, you know, have a May 7th release date, then announce the PS4 at E3 so that you can get people hyped about that after the fact. Yeah, that could be. I don't know. It's just... it. There's all these rumors I mean, everywhere. They, they've already shown footage of it running on the PS3, so it makes sense that it would be on there, but maybe they could port it to the PS4. That's, so. yeah, that's, uh, I don't know. With Naughty, yeah, that would be neat. Listen, is, is Naughty Dog, listen, it, is no listen. <laughs> Regardless of what is coming out on, <laughs> I'll be getting that, Joel. Oh, I, might yeah. have, I might have to give up a kidney. It's, I'm getting it. It's all a moot point because I'm totally buying it and I'm going to... <laughs> I'm like, I'm probably, I want to buy it on a Friday and I'm just going to play it until I like, I'm done with it. And I don't care if it takes me a week or a month. I'm going to, it's going to be done. I'm right there I will with lose, you. I'm going to lose money on this and I'm proud of it. I'm about it's to put mine on great. layaway starting tomorrow. We might have to do a midnight thing with that game. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm all over that. Absolutely. Dude, yeah, I'm telling you, layaway starting tomorrow. If I do five dollars a week <laughs> up until May, I should have that joker paid off. That's yeah, all I'm saying. Done. Oh, that's so awesome. And they'll be like, here here's the last of us. Go play it on your PS4. And you'll be like, oh no. <laughs> yeah. That's all right. I I'll make it work. Somehow I'll make it work. <laughs> I, I um, definitely think Naughty Naughty Dog has something up their sleeve for the PS4 because aren't they the exclusive for Sony anyway? Like or they develop mostly for sony because didn't they are exclusive for sony so that's for sure so sony would be foolish to not have you know coming off of uncharted 3 and the whole uncharted series they'd be foolish not to to market the crap out of the ps4 with the last of us being kind of the flagship um game see i think so they I might uncharted 4 I, yeah PS4. uncharted 4 ps4 that's true they go built in bundle. fan base bundle I'm getting it. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that if if Uncharted 4 was a launch game for PlayStation 4, I think it'd be Yeah, I mean that that would be a system seller right away. Oh yeah, uh, that'd be I'd, bananas. I'd definitely get it. That's probably what they should do. That and Modern Warfare 4. Ooh. <laughs> there <laughs> yep. you go. 
Yeah, they've got all kinds of fours coming up in 2013. See, that's what Dude, I'm saying. they should just, Call of Duty, they should just start over the yeah. numbers with the next generation. No, it'll be <laughs> Call of Duty. it's going to get out of hand. It'll just be called Call of Duty Origins, like they do with like X-Men and all that other stuff. <laughs> it worked for Final Fantasy. <laughs> yeah. Nobody's asking Final yeah. Fantasy to start over. That's right. Just start over, Origins, or Prelude, or Prometheus, <laughs> or something. I don't know, whatever. Well, hey... I'm going to put the Last of Us trailer up on the site. Also, uh, at the VGAs, they showed the Tomb Raider, the new Tomb Raider trailer, which looks yes, oh, Lord. amazing. Yes, so Lord. So I'm going to put, I'm going to definitely put that up. Um, they also showed three minutes of Bioshock Infinite, so that'll go up as well. So there'll be a bunch of stuff on MarriedToTheGames.com coming up this week. Also, the Phantom Pain. Did you guys see that trailer? The oh, Phantom Pain. Oh. No. So check this out. I missed that one. The Phantom Pain, right? It 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 shows, uh, it shows a guy with a hook for a hand, like he got his arm cut off. He's got a hook in place of it. He's in a hospital. This doctor is asking him all the kind of questions. He falls asleep, wakes up. Next thing you know, pandemonium is breaking loose. This guy who's got his whole face wrapped up is like, "Get up, let's go. We got to get out of here." All kind of supernatural stuff is happening around him. So you're like, "Oh shoot, who's this studio?" The studio call is called Moby Dick, right? Okay. Has anybody ever heard of that studio before? Not I, said the fly. So no. this is the speculation. That, this is what's the speculation that's going around. Because uh, Moby Dick Studios, like it has a website and it has a name for somebody, but people aren't buying it. I think the guy's name on there is like Joe Cam or something like that. Anyway, nice. people that are Captain really smart Ahab. looked at the name and they're like, oh, if you flip around the letters, it spells Kojima, who does Metal Gear Solid. And they think that it's a sneak preview of the next Metal Gear Solid Ground Zeroes. And if that's the case, that's the bomb. Because it looks crazy, number one. Oh, so, I gotta see that. Go check that out. Please put that on the site too, uh, Tim, when you get yes, a chance. I will. Phantom Pain. That sounds incredible, Pain. man. Yeah, that sounds it was really, really cool. cool. I was watching it, and then when I started reading more about it, I was like, shut up. Shut up. So I was a huge Metal Gear Solid fan early, early on. Then I just fell off it because I got into RPG land. And uh, so that's another thing I'm wrestling with. I'm like, should I go back and play all these Metal Gear Solids? Sure. <laughs> just to catch up because they are amazing. Hey, man, games. they got the collection. Well, good. I'm about to have to borrow that. I love when I love when developers do that kind of stuff. If it's true, like I think that's awesome. Like just to sneak peek it, have a totally like bogus name, bogus site, like everything. That's that just that just creates more hype. I love that. That's awesome. Me too. Hall, did you have anything else? Nope. Router, did you have anything else? Uh, I'm straight, man. Thank you. All right, let me hit you guys with two more, and then we'll get out of here. Angry Birds, getting a movie. <laughs> yes, sir. Some I saw that. <laughs> that was the last thing I expected you to say. No, I saw that earlier too. I was like, oh no. Uh, Here we 2016, go. 2016, summer 2016. Uh, uh that that uh the popularity will be dead by yeah, then. Yeah, that's kind don't of a killer, isn't it? it? I don't Cancel. know. It depends on it depends Cancel. on how long they can let it float around. You know what I'm saying? We're going into 2013 here in the next couple of weeks. If they can float it for long enough. You know, I keep know. coming out with these different stars. You know, they did they did Angry Birds, Star Wars. Maybe next year they come out with you know Angry Birds, Indiana freaking Jones or something crazy. <laughs> and uh, and so Angry anyway, Birds Pokemon. But the producers are guys that know what they're doing. And so uh, David Maisel, I don't know how you say his last name, Maisel, uh, executive producer. He was he's going to be the produ- he's going to be the executive producer for this. But he produced uh, Iron Man. Uh, Captain America, executive producer, Thor, Incredible Hulk. He, did, he worked at Marvel Studios. Uh, John Cohen, he did Despicable Me. He was producer for that. It's, they said it's going to be 3D CGI. So okay, we'll see. No director yet. Dude, you know, if no they were yet. smart, if they were smart, they would get like Pixar's B team to do a direct to DVD CG movie. Not direct to no. DVD. Pixar's dude, too good for that. That No, I'm, I'm saying the B team, dude. Like the... The lowlies, the guys that don't work on anything important. <laughs> Basically, they uh, should they w- should just hire them, 
to make them a direct DVD movie because it would sell like crazy. Or yeah, direct maybe. to iTunes, it, direct to iTunes movie. Yeah, something. Yeah. Because it would sell. I yep, mean, I don't would. know. I don't, I mean, I, I imagine that kids would still want to see, you know, an Angry Birds movie, but four years from now? Yeah. <laughs> That, this should happen. I mean, happened especially like because two, things two years move ago. in and out of popularity so quickly. It's true. Well, you know, four and years from now, they may up. be saying, angry what? Exactly. Right. I mean, you know, they might need to scooch it up, but at the same time, I'm like, hey, it could work. It could maybe work in theaters. You know what I'm saying? Crazier things have happened, like eight or 9,000 Resident Evil movies. Yeah. Yes, it's true. 9,000 Saw movies, too. Yep. Exactly. The only thing I was kind of hating on a little bit, I don't know that I'd want it. <coughs> excuse me. I don't know if I'd want it in 3D. I, I miss flat. Yeah, I, 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 I miss flat animation. Yeah, I do too. So, yeah, and I think they could still kill it like that. Plus, I, I, I am not going to see a 3D movie until the technology is is completely. I think 100% you guys are. You guys there. talking about different 3D? Are you? Because it sounded like Gabe was talking about hand drawn animation I just mean, versus yeah. I just mean I just mean yeah. I just mean like generated. the whole you know like like Toy Story versus oh, Aladdin. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. It will be so, in three yeah. D by I'm the way you. though. Yes, it will. It will I be, know. and I will not. I will yeah. not see it in three D. I refuse. It, just sucks. It, it it puts a different thing on it that I don't like when it comes yep. to animation. You know, what I'm saying it darkens it up, and there's really hard shadows and. It's not as playful anymore, but I don't know. Maybe yep. they come oh, no, with I'm it. saying we'll like see. 3D, like glasses 3D. Oh, gosh, this is confusing. No, no, no. I'm, I, w- I was with you, but I'm no, saying no, if, they, we do, all with if you. they do glasses 3D, then obviously it's going to be in three-dimensional, you know. Yes. CGI. So anyway. Yeah, yeah CGI. So anyway. Dude, that's the thing is um, if you go back and you watch those Disney animated movies, the ones right before they purchased Pixar, they were in the right place. It was... Yes. The 2D animation looked beautiful. Like yeah, when it had yeah, that really little, right. little bit of CG in it. Nobody yep. watches Lion King and they're like, uh, what were they doing? Was this hand drawn? You know what I'm saying? Nobody <laughs> s- s- nobody sticks their nose up to that, you know? Nope. Nope. You're right. Um, all right. Does anybody have $28,000 I could borrow? Uh, no, that's it. No. Oh man, y'all had twenty five. Y'all ain't got twenty eight for a brother. Yeah, I'm I'm right there, dude. Twenty eight thousand dollars will buy you the Halos Warthog. Oh, nice! A guy named Peter Cooper, British filmmaker, is doing a fan film called Operation Chastity, and uh, he's running low on funds because he's been working on it since '09, and he made an almost exact replica of Halos Warthog out of the, an early '80s. Land Rover Defender. And I was like, shoot, I ain't mad at that. $28,000. I ain't mad at that either. Do we have a picture at all? Can we put that up on the site? (laughs) Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. So if you want to buy it, got 28 cool ones, then let's do it. Wait, wait. Is it four-wheel drive? Does it have power steering? And does it have um, uh, heated seats? That's what I want to know. I don't know, but I think it's funny because the Defender can go underwater because the old school defenders used to have like a tube where it could go underwater. Yeah. 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 You're right. So just for the sake of having to use a pun, either way you'll be okay in a flood. There you go. Sorry. Halo. I ain't mad at you. Perfect. You maybe should, you maybe should be mad at me for that one. Yeah. (laughs) All right. So we'll end off with a question. We like to end off with a question. We've been doing this the last couple of weeks. We want to hear from you guys. We'll answer the question as well, but we want to hear what you guys think of the same thing that we're talking about. And uh, I thought of just a pretty simple one this week. Um, And we'll start with Tim Browder. What do you attribute to being married to the games? What was it that maybe first grabbed you and you were like, I love this and I want to be a part of this somehow? Uh, The fact that I think our demographic is the number one demographic that plays video games first off. Mm -hmm. And then just, I don't know. It's just, it's exciting. And maybe because I'm more, I'm new into, into doing this, but it's just been really exciting to be a part of something like this, just because, you know, we're all 
it, we're all in the same kind of situations. We all have our own jobs. We've got wives, kids, you know, the whole the whole thing. And on top of that, we are doing and playing something that we absolutely love. And and just being able to talk about it and the balance of that, I think, is so much fun. All right, let me ask you this and answer it differently. And we might edit out that last answer, even though it was really good. But <laughs> what do you attribute? The question I was trying to ask you was, what do you attribute to being married to the games? Like, what got you to love gaming so much that now here we are just talking about gaming once a week? You know what I'm saying? What what got you into... Uh, gotcha. What What was the hook that got you into loving video games? Man, that's a good question. I don't know. I think just because that the technology has come along so so much and to me i think video games are like you're you're able to go into almost a movie and you can control the characters and you can control how the movie ends and being sure. able it's you know it's there's an element of fantasy to it which is great and i don't know like i just i always liked playing some sort of a video game gr growing up like what be it at the arcade putting some quarters in or whatever i always just liked the challenges of that and because of what we have available to us now, I think it just makes it so much more real and you can, you can do so much with it and it, and it can go in so many different ways. And I, I love that. I love the fact that you have options. I love the fact that you can control things and it, it, and it's set in a beautiful setting and the controls are great and easy to use. And that it's just, it's really cool. There you go. There you How's go. That? <clears throat> I love it. Timothy Hall, same question to you, sir. Uh, it's just the entertainment factor. I mean, to me, it's kind of like how Tim said, interacting with a movie. Um, you kind of get to be a part of the story, and you kind of get to bend it to your will. That's what makes it so much fun. Yeah. Um, and I kind of feel like um, RPGs gained a lot more depth, and so... It made it a lot more fun for me as far as like using strategy to solve puzzles and problems sure. um, within the game world. So I think that's a lot of fun. Yeah. I mean, I don't necessarily like puzzle games. I enjoy like Tetris and stuff like that. I don't necessarily enjoy how like adventure games do puzzles all the time. Mm -hmm. a, a puzzle for me is like playing Uncharted and you get in this firefight and you've got to kind of figure out how to get out of it. Sure. That's sure. a lot of fun. So, and that's what, that's what really got me hooked back in was that kind of feeling when you play. Cause the AI has gotten to the point now where it's a lot smarter. I mean, you can get out of <clears throat> situations by using more of your brain power, I guess. Right. Sure. So there you go. Exercising my brain. <laughs> it's because you're a smart one. I'd like to think so. <laughs> For me, uh, I think it kind of started, you know, I always, <clears throat> my dad, I remember, bought me a Nintendo when I was really young and, uh, you know, Genesis next and, you know, kind of got everything as I was getting older. And of course, I loved it when I was little, but I think something about, something or somewhere around the, Sega CD to the Saturn to the Dreamcast. I know there's a lot of years in there, but somewhere in there, it just really hooked me. I think it was kind of the couch co-op thing that we've talked about before. Just loving uh, playing with people. And uh, I, I really think the Saturn and the Dreamcast had some amazing games. And I think they came along at the perfect time in my life. And I was like, man, I freaking love this. And of course, story, story-driven games, I always loved. But back then, even fighting games i really really enjoyed when mortal kombat was killing the arcade and and street fighter 2 was having all different kind of versions come out and each one was getting better and then the marvel vs. capcom games were coming out and i think the arcade mixed with uh some of that you know me and my best friends playing at home uh really got me into the whole thing and that and kind of just never let go from then you know definitely Good For memories sure. with games, man. That's that's one thing that keeps me holding on to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Being able to look back and you're like, ah, oh, man, you know this, you know this game makes me think of this point in my life and how awesome this and that and the other was. Yeah, definitely reminiscing about stuff is is incredible as well. 
<clears throat> well, we need to get up out of here, man. We are way past what we usually do. It's all good. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> you you say that because you don't edit the show. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Have fun, Hall. <laughs> yeah, I know. We do appreciate Timothy Hall. We do appreciate you, brother. You do Amen. a good job week in yes. and week out hey, for y'all that don't know. Thanksgiving's over, man. Oh, that's true. I'm not thankful yeah, for you, you at all. I'm taking you for granted every day. <laughs> I ain't mad at you. That's right. As no, long for, as you all ain't mad at me. <laughs> for those that don't know, Timothy Hall is our producer and editor, engineer, and uh, he kills it every week putting this whole thing together. Because we, if people don't know, you probably tell by listening, but we're not all in the same place. We're all in different places. Sometimes I've been cross country. Sometimes we're down the street and just don't feel like going over to somebody else's house. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but we're all spread out and we get together and we do this anyway, man. We love doing it. Please keep listening. Rate us. Review us. Let us know how we're doing. <clears throat> And we're going to keep doing what we do. We're going to be here playing video games. We're going to be here talking about it. Facebook.com slash Married to the Games. Twitter.com slash MTTG cast. Come holler at us. We want to hear from you. Mailbag at Married to the Games.com. You can always hit us, hit us up at the website, Married to the Games.com. We enjoy this. We enjoy y'all listening. Hopefully, y'all are enjoying it. For Gabe Patillo, that's Timothy Hall. That's Tim Router. We are married to the games and we about this peace. <laughs> <laughs>